As the Russian invasion of Ukraine escalates into the second week, the attacks in Ukraine have intensified with air raids pounding the region of the capital, Kyiv. Sirens in Kyiv continue to ring through the night. The Russian troops have been unable to breach the capital until now due to the stiff resistance by the Ukrainian forces. There seems to be no end to the series of attacks in the region. A large explosion lit up the night sky of Chernihiv in the early hours of Saturday morning. Let's talk more about this. And our correspondent, Anas Malik, is joining us live from Lviv. Anas Malik, good to see you and welcome to this broadcast. Are sirens still going off? What's the current situation in the city of Lviv? Well, in the current uh, uh, the current situation in the city of Lviv is that uh, uh, there is sub-zero temperature. The snow is back uh, uh, in here. Um, since the past uh, tw 24 hours or so, uh, we haven't heard uh, air raid sirens going off. The last we heard uh, them was uh, last night, uh, last morning, yesterday morning, about uh, 22 hours back, roughly around 10 a.m. It's uh, as we speak. It's uh, uh, currently uh, 8:30 a.m. here on the dial in Lviv. Uh, the situation is it remains tense. It remains quiet. Uh, relative calm, as I would say, or uh, an uneasy calm. This quietness that you can hear, this this eerie silence uh, that basically comes back basically comes back to haunt you uh, as if as if something's wrong as if the city is mourning or the city is gearing up for something unprecedented uh, that's what the feel in the city is like in general but by and large uh, I spoke to people yesterday uh, I've been speaking to people today as well uh, more and more uh, Ukrainians are now joining the volunteer force uh, to fight alongside their army to protect uh, the, their land from from being invaded by the Russians. Eric? Malik, let's stay on that. I'm sure residents in the west of Ukraine are maintaining caution despite other cities being bombarded. Have you been able to interact? Yes, you said you interacted with the locals. What are they saying about the war in their country? Well, they are disappointed at the international community uh, to the point that they say that uh, NATO uh, and U.S. is all talk and no action. That's what the residents say, the commoners say. They say that uh, their country has been invaded and except for telephone calls, uh, nothing has been done in practical. Uh, and they also say that uh, they should not be giving heed to rumors uh, that are afloat. Uh, yesterday we saw rumors uh, uh, going around that uh, President Zelensky has, quote, fled the country. Country. But just a while back, uh, President Zelensky, Zelensky in his Instagram video has said that he is there to stay, he has not left, and that the work continues. So by and large, the residents are disappointed over the, re over the response of the international community. The residents are charged, they geared up, and they vow to protect their land at all costs to, to uh, fight with their forces. And they have full fo faith uh, in the Ukrainian uh, armed forces as well uh, in order to give this pushback to the invaders. Eric? Malik, lastly, some Ukrainians feel like the West of Ukraine or Lviv is safer. Do we have Ukrainians fleeing to the city or is it the opposite? Some of the Lvivians are escaping their city in fear of an invasion. Give us a sense of the humanitarian situation in that city. Well, both some of the Lvivians are indeed leaving. We've seen shops being closed, but that's that's not much of a number. Maybe some in thousands, not that much. Uh, we have to understand that Lviv is in the west part of the country where I am, uh, and this city is serving as a transit route or a transit hub for other residents of or other citizens of the country uh, from elsewhere. They're flocking into Lviv so that uh, they can go flee to safety. Uh, Lviv uh, holds the gateway to two borders uh, that adjoins with Poland. One is the Karacho 
lower border. The other is the Medica crossing. Uh, both we've seen long and longer queues. The Karachova crossing uh, enables only travelers through cars and through motor vehicles to go in and come out. Uh, and whereas the Medica crossing enables both travelers on foot and on uh, motor vehicles to go in and come out. Therefore, uh, it is pertinent to mention that uh, uh, People from elsewhere in the country are currently flocking into Lviv. Not just people; it's the West, it's, it's the media as well. Uh, you'd barely be able to find rooms here in any hotel because they're so overbooked. Uh, this, despite the residents opening their houses for those migrants or uh, uh, um, internally, internally displaced persons as well. Despite of that, there is uh, the room occupancy around here is. Full. So that actually explains the gravity of the situation uh, to the extent that uh, uh, how desperate people are from elsewhere in the country uh, to flock into Lviv to leave. Uh, uh, as I talk to you, there's a train that's uh, arrived. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but there's just a train that's arrived from the other part of the country uh, to Lviv. And so w the other thing that uh, we have to keep in mind that this the, the train station from Lviv is also uh, connecting uh, Le uh, Ukraine to uh, Poland as well in uh, Shemshel. Uh, the uh, Shemshel, the, the Poland uh, 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 railway station as well, we reported from there. So people are flocking in here, not the, uh, that much of a greater number of Liv Livians leaving, but yes, this city continues to be packed for the fact that it continues to serve as a transit route or a transit hub. Eric? Live from Lviv, thank you very much. Our correspondent, Anas Malik, stay safe.